Unless you've been living under a rock for the past few years, you have probably heard the news that Flash is dying in 2020. And last time I checked, that's this year! All of the major browsers will be removing support for their respective Flash plugins. Not even Internet Explorer will be immune. Hell, I can't even open Google Chrome anymore without it asking me to disable Flash. To people like me who grew up playing Flash games, usually in the back corner of an elementary school classroom, it is really sad to see Flash go. However, it's not like Flash is leaving for no good reason. ActionScript, the programming language that is the backbone for Flash games, first released in 1998, and its most recent version, ActionScript 3.0, still released all the way back in 2006. Throughout its lifetime, Adobe has been in a constant battle to fix the numerous bugs, issues, and security vulnerabilities that have run rampant through Flash. With Adobe stopping any future Flash updates after 2020, browsers simply can't afford to deal with the numerous unchecked security vulnerabilities that Flash will ultimately impose. For speedrunners, this could propose a major issue. When Club Penguin was shut down in 2017, it completely froze the game speedrun.com leaderboards. No new runs have been added in the past three years. So, once Flash is shut down in 2020, will every other Flash game on speedrun.com meet the same fate? In today's video, we are going to answer that question. This is the official standalone Adobe Flash player. Simply open a .swf file, the compiled form of a Flash game, and bam, the game is being played. No browser or internet necessary. .swf files are obtained through a relatively easy process. Simply navigate to a website that hosts the game that you want to play, open Inspect Element, navigate to the Network tab, enable Flash Player, filter for .swf files, and bam, there it is. Some Flash game websites, like Not Doppler, even provide a page of .swf file downloads. The standalone Flash Player provides other benefits over playing on a website. The game runs much smoother due to the less amount of lag, and there are no ads to worry about unless they are embedded in the game itself. Flash games have more lag in browsers because browsers have a lot more actions to deal with than just running the Flash game. The standalone Flash player has one job and one job only, to play the game. With all of these benefits, it probably doesn't come as much of a surprise that most Flash speedruns are done on the standalone platform already. However, despite most Flash speedruns being done outside of a browser, Flash's death on web will still make a huge impact for speedrunning. Despite all of the benefits that Standalone provides, there are still many Flash speedruns that are done on websites, usually amongst newer runners. When people first start speedrunning Flash games, they usually aren't aware of the existence of the Standalone player. For example, someone may stumble across the leaderboard of their favorite Flash game of years past. Let's say, for instance, it was Run 2. Maybe they took a look at the world record to learn all of the strategies. <laughs> How the f- They pop that game into the search bar, first link, coolmathgames.com. Click to enable Flash, and boom! The first speedrun attempts begin. This is part of why Flash games are so appealing to speedrun. They are usually short, making it easy to get a first attempt done, and they are very easy to record with free capture software like OBS. Additionally, Flash speedruns seldom have any cutscenes to worry about, meaning that runs are very fast-paced and attempts can be done very quickly. But back to the platform question. New runners aren't the only people who are still speedrunning Flash games on websites. Sometimes, Flash games cannot just be downloaded and played on the standalone Flash player because of a little thing called DRM. DRM, or Digital Rights Management, describes the anti-piracy measures that are employed in video games and other forms of media. While well-established games such as Spyro Year of the Dragon employed DRM measures that had even the most skilled hackers scratching their heads for months on end, most Flash game DRM measures ultimately rely on a simple URL check. The game will find the URL of the website that it is being played on, and the game will only load properly if that website has been whitelisted in the game's code. These checks can sometimes be patched out by decompiling the Flash game and editing the game's code directly. 
For example, I, it's Maximum, was able to make the last five levels of Red Ball playable, which were site-locked to King.com, a website that doesn't even host the game anymore. However, Flash developers have another trick up their sleeve, obfuscation. Obfuscation jumbles up the code of a Flash game when it is compiled into a .swf file, and when it is run through a decompilation program like JPEXS, the code is an absolute unreadable mess. On top of being hard to read, obfuscation often confuses JPEXS's recompiler, meaning that many scripts cannot be directly edited without completely bricking the game. Sometimes, the only reliable way to edit a Flash game's code is by editing the p-code, and let me tell you, it's an absolute nightmare. So, when Flash is gone from browsers, are these DRM-locked games gonna be lost for good? No, not at all. And this is all thanks to a massive Flash game archival project called Flashpoint. Blue Maxima's Flashpoint is a program that is able to access and play almost every single Flash game, amongst games from other dying platforms. From bottom-of-the-barrel games to absolute classics, Flashpoint really has it all. Flashpoint is able to play these games in their original state, whether or not the game has any DRM. But how is this possible? This is all accomplished with URL spoofing. Instead of patching out the URL checkers themselves, Flashpoint simply gives the game the exact URL that it is looking for. No hacking necessary. Whenever a user wants to play a game on the normal version of Flashpoint, it is downloaded from the cloud. However, there is also a over 300 gigabyte download that will store all of the games on the machine that it is being played on. Essentially, every important Flash game ever made can be played with no issues, even without an internet connection. So, I'll just load up a copy of Nitrum's Hot Air and, uh, where the heck is it? In February 2020, news came out that Nitrum had asked Flashpoint to remove all of their titles from the platform. In recent years, Nitrum has become more focused on making mobile games, whether it be new titles or ports of their Flash games, such as Colorblind. These games are often riddled with microtransactions and ads, so basically your typical mobile game. As controversial and unfortunate as this move may be, Nitrome does own the copyright and intellectual property to these games, and they are within their rights to have them taken off Flashpoint. Seeing as the Flashpoint team probably isn't looking to get sued, they complied with their request. As of March 2020, no Nitrome games are available for download on Flashpoint. However, this doesn't mean that Nitrome games will be lost to time. We simply have to jump through a couple more, uh, hurdles to play them. And with the DRM rabbit hole out of the way, we can finally get to the third reason why some flash speedruns are still done on the web. Despite the extra lag, sometimes web is actually faster than standalone. But how is this possible, you may ask? Well, let's take a look at Red Ball. Here you can see Red Ball being played in the standalone player versus being played on Google Chrome through an HTML file. For this demonstration, the SWF has been hacked to allow a string of inputs to be read and processed on every reset. And this was also all made possible because the creator of the game sent us the source code of Red Ball 1, which still blows my mind to this day. Though the exact same inputs are being read on both platforms, Red Ball is jumping further on web, allowing this time-saving strategy in level 10 to be possible. And unfortunately, this third reason is the most challenging to overcome. For this one specific instance, we need to find a way to play Flash games on a web browser after 2020. We aren't quite sure whether this will be accomplished with a virtual machine, an old version of a browser, some jank browser that nobody has ever heard of, or something else entirely. However, the one thing that we can be certain of is that we will find a way, because that's just what speedrunners do. So to answer the question that was proposed by this video, 
Will Flash game speedrunning die in 2020? Well, thanks to Adobe's standalone Flash player and the fantastic Flash game archival project called Flashpoint, the answer to that question is a definite no. Maybe there will come a day when Flash games will lose all of their relevancy and all of their respective leaderboards on speedrun.com will lie dormant indefinitely. But I don't like to think about that because it makes me really sad. That was the video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you are interested in doing any Flash game speedruns of your own, there is a relatively large selection of games under the web platform on speedrun.com. Just make sure to check show unofficial releases to see them all. I'm definitely not done with this whole YouTube thing, so stay tuned for more videos in the future. Have a great day, and happy speedrunning!